It was a quiet night when Fox found the coin. An owl mourned its dignity in the distant trees while its prey hid from the frigid bite of winter. Spring was on its way. Flower buds had started to peek from the stiff ground and the moss underfoot wasn't damp for the first time in weeks. The air carried the unmistakable trace of a new mother's milk. Fox's own. Life was about to get easier. Her kits would arrive in a world of bountiful prey and warm nights, and come next winter, they'd almost be as tall as their mother, strong enough to join her on these hunts. Her belly growled, a crude reminder of the task at hand. She had to stay strong for them. She swiveled her ears this way and that, desperate for any tiny scrabble under the dirt. The trees rustled and the owl continued to mourn. The trickle of a nearby river whispered to her. The air's chill burned her nose and the moonlight pooled through the filter of a million tree branches to reveal little but pine needles and thick clumps of grass. Something in the dark, however, caught her eye as she prowled along. A tiny glint of metal. She investigated. It appeared to be bronze, but it didn't carry any scent whatsoever. What intrigued her more, though, was the picture engraved into its side. A twisting plant curled into itself in the centre of the coin, and when she used her nose to flip it over, the image was repeated on the other side. Claws fastened themselves into her belly as she stepped back. She wanted it. She wanted this coin, she realised, so desperately that any trace of hunger was banished from her mind. Unable to drag herself away, she took the coin between her teeth and turned, trotting back into the darkness. For a while, she thought little of it. She kept the coin nearby, enjoying its shine and running her paws over the surface to feel the engraving on her rough paw pads. Things changed, however, when spring bloomed and her kits were nearly with her. She knew she needed a den. Taking her coin between her teeth as always, she ambled, no longer nimble enough to elegantly trot, through the woods in search of a perfect place. She found it on the side of an incline, nestled between a rocky overhang and a hill. She put down her coin and prepared to dig, before she saw the little coin start to glow. Static covered her body, her hackles raised, and she barked in alarm. She stumbled back and grabbed the coin in preparation to run, just as the earth in front of her shifted and moved to form a tunnel. She waited for something, anything else to happen, but the forest fell silent after the tunnel had formed, the only noise being gentle bird song and branches swaying in the breeze. The hole in the dirt stayed sturdy and silent, and the coin no longer glowed. With an uneasy glance down her nose, the metal between her teeth, she squirmed into the tunnel. It was just big enough for her pregnant form to wiggle in, and it extended deep into the hill before opening into a chamber, cosy despite the bitter cold of the woods. It was perfect. Fighting unease, she curled up to await her kits. She had bigger priorities right now, and could worry about it later. At least, that was what she told herself. She found that three newborns took up a great deal of energy, and she rather forgot about the mysterious creation of her den. It was several days before she emerged from below the hill and shook herself at the unexpected breeze. Spring had most definitely sprung, and the air stank of pollen. She took a moment to groom herself, placing the coin, which of course she had to take with her, by her paws. The swish of wings alerted her to a stranger's arrival, and she twitched her ear towards the sound. Fox, I believe? A voice rasped. You believe correctly? Fox answered, licking her lips and looking up to see the intruder. A carrion crow. He sat perched on a tree stump, preening delicately. Crow, good to see you. Is it? Not really. Crow laughed at that, his voice a harsh cry. What is it you want, Crow? Just come for a chat. First time you've been out of that den in quite some days. Fox narrowed her eyes. Crows weren't carnivorous, but they might be tempted to steal an eye from a kit while their mother was away hunting. If you mean to threaten me, I don't, I assure you. I just meant to inquire about how that den was created. I saw it, you know. I just wanted to warn you that coin is bad news. Fox tensed and the fur on her hackles raised. The coin? I've seen one of those before, back in my home forest. It's dangerous. It takes energy from living things around it, uses it to fuel its magic. It didn't seem to drain much life from me when it built my den for me. It's rather perfect, you know. So it would seem, Crow bristled. But look around. That tree was alive when you first arrived here. Fox looked over her shoulder to where Crow had gestured with his beak and noticed a wilting, bare tree. 
It was void of leaves, despite the new spring, and the bark was a sickly, pale colour that she knew it hadn't been days earlier. She pinned her ears back. Well, she grumbled, it's helped me. It will continue to, Crow said. It will help and help, drawing you in until it kills you and the forest you live in. You should get rid of it. Give it back to the river and let the water drown it. Why should I believe you, Fox spat. Her temper bubbled. Why do you think I had to leave my home forest? Crow fixed her with a beady stare before he took off and swooped away, leaving Fox alone with her thoughts. She shivered, peered back at her kits one last time, and bounded into the trees. Crow had been right. Whenever Fox went out to hunt, tree branches lifted out of her way, thorns shifted so they wouldn't scratch her, and on one occasion a root had lifted out of the ground just in time to trip a rabbit she'd been chasing. She was growing plump, her coat silky, and her kits opened their eyes. The forest, however, was not so lucky. Flowers were struggling to grow, leaves limply hung from their branches, and some parts of the woods began to smell of sickness. A low fog began to coat the underbrush as more of it died. Each time she hunted, Crow would await her by the entrance to her den, staring at her in silent accusation. Fox only snapped her teeth at him. Three weeks passed, and Fox wouldn't budge. When a stubborn tree refuses to fall, it takes a devastating blow to knock it down. Fox's came when she awoke one morning to find her son collapsed, convulsing, with spittle at his mouth. She yelped, panic dampening her paw pads with sweat and raising her hackles. Her other children huddled by the far side of the cavern, watching their brother with wide, frightened eyes. Fox nudged him. No response. She grabbed the coin between her teeth and bolted from the den, spitting it to the ground by the stump where she knew Crow would be sitting. How do I fix this? She bade. Fix what? Crow calmly shuffled his wings. My son, something's wrong. You know what's wrong. The coin is draining him. He's a battery. You desire its comforts and it needs a source. Fox hissed. I know what can I do. How do I fix this? You know how to fix this. I told you weeks ago and you refused. Don't expect free counsel a second time. He took off, gliding away before Fox had a chance to retort. She furiously racked her brain to remember Crow's advice. Let it drown, he said. What was it he said? Let it drown the river. She started running immediately. The coin still lay amongst the roots of the tree stump and she snatched it up. She all but flew over the decaying forest floor, bolting towards the distant river. A suddenly upturned tree root, which she knew had nestled safely underground a moment before, snagged her paw, sending her sprawling to the floor. Breath was knocked out of her, but she kept a firm grip on the coin. It seemed to fight against her, curling plants over her body and tightening roots around her paws in an attempt to keep her pinned to the floor. It knew. She writhed, snapping at her teeth at the plants, pinning her down. She tore herself free with a cry of rage and hauled herself back to her feet. She had to finish this. Pine cones pelted her as she ran. Roots reached up to claw her, but she sprang past their reach. The riverbank was in sight now, but it was obscured with a wail as a massive tree slammed to the ground right in front of her. She narrowly missed being crushed by the colossal pine, and she darted underneath just in time. She narrowed her eyes as she spotted a flat rock overlooking the river. Nothing the coin could manipulate there. No life form to drain. She leapt for it, landing with a harsh thud and throwing the coin as far as she could. It soared and landed in the river with a sharp hiss. Immediately, a gust of wind exploded from where the coin had hit the water, reverberating through the wood. Birds cried out in fear and flocks of them rose into the sky, and Fox could hear rodents fleeing the scene from underground. She got shakily back to her feet and stared at the river. A familiar swish made her turn her head, and she saw Crow landing on a tree branch just behind her. You did the right thing, he dipped his head, and Fox nodded briskly at him. She turned to head home. I'll help you. Crow's voice made her pause, and she turned to look back at him. With your son, I'll help you. You know how? Her voice wavered. Maybe. Worth a try. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Knowing it unwise to disregard his help again, Fox waved her tail in thanks, and as she trotted back towards home, she saw the world starting to heal.